What do you need to know about the SECURE Act and your retirement? The SECURE Act made more changes at the retirement plan level than it did at the individual level. With that in mind, this is a short video that covers a few things that you will want to know about the SECURE Act and retirement planning. Before we get started, if you haven't been here before, I'm Dan Lomar. I'm a CFP professional with United Wealth Management, where we specialize in peer rent management and financial planning for pilots at United Airlines. And like many of you, my business partner, Alan Buell, and I are both pilots. Pilots for United. Welcome to another video. Before we get going, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you know when new videos come out. All right, we're going to get right into it. The SECURE Act, what do we need to know as far as United Pilots go? Uh, there's really not that much to know, I'll admit that, but I did want to kind of put a video out there, short, sweet, to the point just so you know you're not missing something. And also dispel maybe a couple rumors out there as to what this thing pertains to. As always, this is for educational purposes only. Please don't take this as tax, legal, or investment advice. And this is not intended to be a comprehensive uh, video or topic coverage of what the SECURE Act is about. I'm just trying to touch upon a couple things here. Uh, and uh, so go dig a little bit deeper uh, for your own situation. But this is what it's about. The SECURE Act, it's uh, setting every community up for retirement enhancement. And all it is is the government is just one more way they're trying to encourage some retirement savings. And of course, for every give, there's a little take. And so they uh, did some stuff here to also get a little bit of money for themselves also. Uh, and the biggest thing they did to get some more money for themselves uh, is they did away with what's called the stretch IRA provision. This was mostly eliminated. So what you used to be able to do is if you had an inherited IRA, you used to be able to take those distributions over the over your life expectancy and you could really get some uh, long-time tax deferral benefits out of doing that. Or if you were to pass on your IRA or 401k, uh, to uh, uh, someone else after you pass away, they 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 could do the same thing, but that they did away with that for non-spousal beneficiaries. And so what it is now is if um, a beneficiary receives an IRA or 401k, uh, it has to be taken out over a 10-year period. Um, there are no required minimum distributions during that 10-year period, so you could put it off all the way till the 10th year. But depending on how big it is. Uh, it could be a pretty sizable tax bill. So that's the thing. That's the biggest thing there is they did away with this stretch, this stretch IRA provision. Uh, this applies to beneficiaries that would be inheriting these accounts in 2020 and beyond. So if you inherited an account uh, last year or earlier than that, doesn't change anything. And again, this applies mostly to non-spousal beneficiaries with some exceptions. So let's talk about that. Um, so these folks, would, they came up with a new beneficiary class called Eligible Designated Beneficiaries, and they are still allowed to stretch. There's nothing new, uh, nothing changed for these folks. So spouses can still stretch it out over their life expectancy, disabled beneficiaries, chronically ill beneficiaries, <clears throat> individuals not more than 10 years younger than the decedent, and then also certain minor children. So certain minor children would be children of the account owner. So I could not pass it on to my nieces or nephews if they are minor children and have them take it over their uh, life expectancy. It has to be a, a child, a minor child of my own or the, the actual account owner. Uh, so these folks can still take it over the uh, distribute over their life expectancy. A, a minor child, they can distribute it over their life expectancy up to the age they turn majority and then the 10 year rule kicks in. And of course, it, uh, uh, spouses can still do IRA rollovers. Uh, another big change is, um, I don't know how many uh, this affects, but if you do have a trust that is set up as a beneficiary of a retirement plan, a plan you will want to review the rules of how that trust is set up uh, because the changes in the rules can affect how the trust is distributed. And it's very possible that if it's set up under the old rules, that actually you could actually tie the money up in the trust and actually have it all distributed in the 10th year. So there's a lot of specifics about this. I am certainly not a trust lawyer. And if I had a client who came to me and it, with the questions about this, the first thing we would do is consult an attorney. So that's what I would say, is that review your beneficiaries for any IRA or, or 401k accounts. Um, and if, if there is a trust as a beneficiary, 
uh, consult a lawyer uh, as to how the new rules would uh, impact those things. That's a key takeaway on this. So they changed the, the age for required minimum distributions. It used to be age 70 and a half is when you used to be forced to take, to start being forced to take uh, minimum distributions from your IRAs and your 401ks. That new age is now 72. Um, and this applies if you're turning 70 and a half in 2020 or later. So if you turn 70 and a half in 2019 and you still haven't taken your first RMD out, uh, you still, uh, you still have to do that under the old rules. Uh, so again, first distribution is still not due until April 1st after the year you turned 72. So if you did wait until the, uh, that year, you actually still have to take out two, uh, distributions. That's not any different. Uh, so uh, kind of an advantage of it is it's a little bit easier to understand than the age 70 and a half rule. Um, it's just a straight age 72. Um, uh, it gives you a little bit more time to do Roth conversions if you wanted to. And then um, uh, uh, the big question is, did they change the life expectancy tables based on this? And they have, not, they have not as of yet. IRS life expectancy tables have not changed with the uh, new uh, RMD age, but they are expected to sometime pretty soon. Uh, traditional IRA contributions, it used to be you have to do them before age 70 and a half. Now you can do them. There's no more age limit on those, uh, but you still have to have earned income um, and you can still do spousal IRAs. So not a big change. I don't see a ton of uh, folks I'm talking to, uh, United Pilots that are still working and still contributing at age 70 and a half, but you know, just FYI. And then the last thing I'll say about this is that there's something called a Qualified Charitable Distribution Anti-Abuse Rule. That's new with the SECURE Act. It basically has to do with the fact that if you're making deductible traditional IRA contributions after age 70 and a half and making QCDs, those IRA contributions can affect how much your QCDs count towards your RMDs. That's about all I'm going to say about it because uh, I don't see that many people of the audience that might be watching my videos that this is going to affect. But if it is, key point, dig deeper. Um, just know that it is out there. Uh, there is a new 10% penalty exception for adoption or childbirth, and it basically uh, would allow a couple to avoid the 10% penalty if they want to take money out of a retirement plan or an IRA. Of course, the retirement plan would have to allow it itself. Uh, it's still taxable income, but they could take $5,000 out per person per birth, so possibly up to $10,000 per year. Uh, and then here's something that's a little bit new is they can, they're actually going to, there are some provisions that you could actually repay that. Uh, that's something a little bit new, and uh, the rules as to how it can be repaid, uh, that's going to be, uh, that's still to be determined uh, by Treasury regulations. Um, so here's uh, to dispel a rumor. There's a big conversation last month about annuities are going to flood our retirement plan. You just don't see this being the case. Um, but what it is, and this is just kind of something that got started probably in the rumor mill somewhere, is that... Um, there was this, this misperception that uh, annuities were going to take everything over. And all it is, is that a lifetime income option, mostly for smaller business plans, they put a provision in there so that it's a little bit easier for a small business plan to put annuity options into their retirement plan. Okay, so an annuity, a small business owner uh, is liable. They're a fiduciary to the plan, so they are liable for some of the things in the investments they choose in a plan. And they kind of reduce some of that liability by making safe harbor provisions, which just allows them to uh, a little bit uh, easier to make these uh, income options in the plan. So that's really, that's all it is. I do not see annuities taking over uh, the PRAP. Uh, a couple of miscellaneous things. Um, they increase the penalty for filing late. Uh, the kitty tax rules uh, revert back to the um, uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act rules uh, before that was uh, in effect. Um, I've never dealt with it. Um, so anyway, if you do, uh, just look into it a little bit deeper. Uh, and then uh, these are just the other uh, changes in the law. And most of these basically just show you that they are all at the plan level and not really at the individual retirement level. Um, so that's it. Uh, that's kind of a summary of uh, what they have to do with the retirement planning. As you can see, really nothing directly with our plan as it stands right now. Uh, but there are just some things to be aware of uh, for retirement planning purposes. And uh, like I said, this is going to 
uh, a summary, kind of scratching the surface a lot of these things. The, comp the key point of most of this is that if any of this stuff applies to you, uh, take a deeper dive into it with uh, your advisor or your attorney. Hey, if you got any questions, comments, recommendations, referrals, uh, shoot me an email, dan at unitedwealthmanagement.com. There's also a contact me link on the uh, video uh, notes in YouTube. And I actually uh, absolutely appreciate the feedback I've been getting uh, on my video. So thank you very much uh, for that. Um, if this is not your cup of tea or you fly with somebody who doesn't like to mess with this or doesn't want to follow the rules, hey, let them know I'm, I am open for business. Uh, and uh, if nothing else, to connect with me on LinkedIn, trying to build up the network there a little bit as well. Uh, I put out a video earlier this week about the coronavirus and your investments. I did something a little bit different, which was kind of like a text conversation because it was based on a real text that I got from somebody asking me about the coronavirus and how it's going to impact their investments. So it gave me an idea for this. So I'll have the link uh, to this video uh, at the end of this one uh, that you're watching. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon and, uh, so that you know when new videos come out. Hey, thanks a lot.